Ever since the release of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker's Trailer 3 by Disney and Lucasfilm, a lot of fans have been very interested in the fourth trailer of Episode 9 by George Lucas and J.J. Abrams. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now, one thing about The Rise of Skywalker is that we do know that during this month of November is by far the most important month in order to market The Rise of Skywalker correctly, in order to make it a box office success. Now, following by of course the trailer for of episode 9 also called the international trailer of this movie after that we're going to get a series of TV spots with brand new footage very similar to what they did with the last Jedi with the last Jedi we got like around like what was it like 26 to 28 TV spots it was insane uh, not quite sure if they will be going to that extent though because JJ Abrams has expressed before on the Howard Stern show that he doesn't like giving a lot of shots away in TV spots or trailers and stuff around those lines so with that being said, with, you know, with the fact that they are trying to really, really organize themselves with the marketing of Episode 9 and really trying to fix the ending of this movie, what's really intriguing has all to do with shot descriptions consisting of a sequence where it's explained that Palpatine is described to be inside of his throne room with both Rey and Kylo Ren, where they both appear to be injured and are laying on the ground as Palpatine is described to be shooting a stream of red force lightning in the sky, taking down numerous Star Destroyers that belong to the First Order and even Resistance cruisers. It's explained that one of the close-up shots of Kylo Ren are said to describe that Kylo Ren's face is very bruised and cut up after his previous battle with Sidious, where the laughter of Palpatine can be, can be heard in the background. The Red Sith Lightning is said to have been inspired from the sun from Star Wars The Clone Wars and that J.J. Abrams got the idea from Dave Filoni during their discussions with each other. During the shot, it's described that a brand new theme for Palpatine by John Williams is said to play over the shot, where the scenery is very dark and gritty and also involves dialogue of both Rey and Kylo Ren. The next goes over a sequence in which both Rey and Kylo Ren are walking toward each other on top of the second Death Star wreckage where as they near each other, it's described to be a profile view of the characters where Darth Vader's breathing can be heard over Kylo Ren's shot, where new Luke Skywalker dialogue plays over the shot when it focuses on Rey. In both of which of the shots of both Rey and Kylo Ren, there is said to be a large wave of water that crashes on both Rey and Kylo Ren, where a new theme of the Imperial March by John Williams begins to tune into the shot, adding in drama to the sequence for the fans. It's explained that the scene is said to mimic the battle between Obi-Wan and Anakin on Mustafar from Revenge of the Sith, and that the shots included in the upcoming international trailer that will demonstrate all of that. Another goes over a moment in which it describes that Rey is actually said to be inside of a crystal cave, where she is said to be meditating on a large boulder that is floating around six feet off the ground, where pieces of the Skywalker saber are floating around Rey while her eyes are closed. As this happens, it's explained that the past voices of Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Luke Skywalker, Yoda, and even Leia are heard in the background, where it eventually leads to a sequence in which Rey opens her eyes, where the pieces of the Skywalker saber begin to connect to each other. As this happens, a brand new theme by John Williams begins to play over the shot for the characters of Rey and the new Skywalker theme is said to play over the shot as well. The sequence is one of the key shots for the upcoming fourth trailer that will debut during the month of November, where lastly a shot that involves Luke Skywalker in the form of a flashback, where it's explained to be a rear shot of Luke with R2-D2, looking at his Jedi training temple, where it's actually explained that in the distance a group of young Jedi Knights in uniform can be seen around 30 feet in the distance from Luke in a unique formation in front of the Jedi training temple. This is implied to be a flashback of Skywalker's past life. So let's go over a couple of parts about this. Now, the thing about the upcoming trailer, in case you guys did not know, and why it's so important by Disney and Lucasfilm, two reasons. A lot of fans felt that the third trailer was very much underwhelming about what they saw because it didn't have big reveals like what the second teaser trailer had. In the second teaser trailer, we had the epic battle between both Rey and Kylo Ren clashing their sabers on the second Death Star with that epic music. We had Dark Rey with the double-bladed red lightsaber and many more. Now, the 
final trailer, by the way, the third trailer was actually a trailer that was either underwhelming the fans or something that really got a lot of fans very excited. Now, the upcoming international trailer, also known as the fourth trailer for episode nine, is a big deal. Now, this new trailer is going to be a big deal because this actual new way of marketing by Disney and Lucasfilm obviously is going to cater to multiple different countries outside of the US. And most of it has all to do with Japan, China and every, everywhere, else, everywhere else around the world in order to really get the film out there and to get it very well known. Now, the one piece that I do want to go over here that really stands out to me a lot has all to do with Palpatine shooting red Sith lightning into the sky in front of both Rey and Kylo Ren is going to be one of the key shots in the upcoming international trailer. Now, what I like about this and the reason as to why I feel that this is very true to Star Wars in general is because J.J. Abrams got the idea from Dave Filoni. Now, in case you guys have no idea who Dave Filoni is, he is the showrunner of Star Wars Rebels and the Clone Wars and was even a part of Star Wars The Mandalorian. In case you guys did not know this, Dave Filoni directed some episodes for The Mandalorian and that's going to be very exciting to see exactly how it all unfolds. So the fact that J.J. had discussions with Dave and how a lot of those discussions led to how certain aspects of the film would be used for the character Palpatine I think is a step in the right direction by Disney and Lucasfilm and how they wanted to treat the character Palpatine essentially giving us a different level of power for Sidious. We've never seen anything like this before in the Skywalker saga, Red Force Lightning. So this most likely alludes to Palpatine using a new power called Force Conduit. Now Force Conduit is said to be an ability that Palpatine will use that will rejuvenate himself, bringing himself to a more youthful state, making him far stronger by literally draining the power from both Rey and Kylo Ren through the power of the Beyond. The Beyond, by the way, is said to be the most powerful Force Nexus there is out of the entire galaxy. And that's exactly how Palpatine is going to be able to use that power is because the power of the beyond is said to exceed the dark side of the force. It's said to be raw power that Palpatine uses, but he can only use when both Rey and Kylo Ren are in the same exact room as him, or at least in close proximity. And that's going to be very interesting. We've never seen anything like this before in a Star Wars film. Again, we are just 34 days away a little over one month ago until we get to finally see JJ's vision of how the Skywalker saga should really end and how the sequel trilogy will end off and exactly how things are going to be done through of course both Palpatine, you know, Rey, Kylo Ren, Luke Skywalker and more. And that's the thing about this film. The fact that they are taking many different risks and throwing in many different pieces of nostalgia, they do have to be careful because in my opinion, I think that nostalgia needs to be treated with reason. It has to have a great purpose behind it as to why Disney and Lucasfilm would even consider using that. And when you think about nostalgia, right, uh, a lot of fans are either very mixed on Palpatine's return or are really much embracing the fact that Palpatine is back in the flesh. And yes, he's back in the flesh. It's acting as if he never really died at the very end of Return of the Jedi, which has a lot of fans, you know, very, I guess you could say, conflicted with the story and whether or not that was a real good decision or a bad decision by Disney and Lucasfilm. I'm kind of in the middle as well. I'm not quite sure how I feel about Palpatine being back in the flesh. Yes, I am excited. I'm very excited about Palpatine's return and how Ian McDermott is coming back once more. And honestly, it's the driving force of the hype of the movie, at least in my point of view, and I'm sure it is for a lot of other Star Wars fans out there, and the reason as to why they even want to go ahead and see this movie. It kind of reminds me of how Luke was used as the motive to go ahead and see The Last Jedi. Now Palpatine is being used as a motive to go ahead and see The Rise of Skywalker. So that's the one thing here, is that hopefully they don't screw up up Palpatine's character in this movie just like they did with Luke in The Last Jedi. If you guys like Luke in The Last Jedi that's fine but I feel that they you know treated him unfairly in the movie and they kind of took him on a different path that just did not agree with me personally as a Star Wars fan. So that's the thing with this this film, you know, the trailer for the international trailer, it's going to be the kickstart to the full on marketing of this film, where we are now just weeks away, a little over four weeks away until the release of this movie. Can you believe that? I mean, time really just flew by. So anyways, guys, drop a comment below. 
Let me know what you think about all this in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.